Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. In this session on environmental geography, we are going to learn about ecotone, ecoline and edge effect. So we are going to talk about these three major concepts in environmental geography paper that holds key to many questions as well. So let's learn ecotone, ecoline and edge effect. But before we go further, please like and subscribe to my channel, The Geoecologist and also you can follow me on Instagram by the same name. So thank you. The word ecotone, let's go by the word itself, was coined from a combination of ecology plus tone. So basically, it means the basic meaning is the Greek word tonos that says a place where ecologies are in tension. So it is a place of tension. What is a tension meaning? It means there is an interaction between two different objects or flora or fauna and what happens? There is a creation of tension. But is it really a tension? Let's see that. So ecosystem 1 and ecosystem 2, if you observe there is a transition zone between that and it is called ecotone. So ecotone is coming from the expanse of the word that is tonos, that is tension, but actually there is not the same kind of tension that we talk in daily life. It's a different kind of tension. So how is it different? Let's see that. So let's see an ecotone is zone of junction or a transition area, an area that is in between. It means it is not A nor B. It is somewhere between A and B. So it is between two biomes, that is two diverse ecosystems. So remember, nature is not as sharp cutting. It means it's not fixing its boundary in a way we human beings fix our home's boundary. So what happens? There is a transition area. There is a smoothen area through which again another ecosystem begins. So what happens? Ecotone is the zone where two communities meet and integrate, right? Then, for example, mangrove forest represent an ecotone between marine and terrestrial ecosystem. So mangrove forest, if you remember Sundarbans in India, so what is there? It is basically a mangrove forest and what is the two different communities there? One is the river community that is Ganges and the other is the Indian Ocean. Right, Bay of Bengal. So what happens? There is a combination, right? There is a junction between two areas. So other examples are grassland, that is forest and desert. In between them, grassland can be there or forest or agricultural land. In between them, grassland can be there. Then we have estuary, that is again between fresh water and salt water. Then river bank or marshland, again between dry and wet. So you see this is in between situation. It is not a fixed situation. What else? Let's learn about the formation of ecotones. So how does it form? It forms in two different ways. One is natural way. What is that natural way? Naturally ecotones can be formed through abiotic factors that is the non-living factors. Remember ecosystem has living factors and non-living factors. So through non-living factors, that is abiotic factors such as changes in soil composition can lead to it. So ecotones are very common on mountain ranges if you see. Due to wide variety of climatic shifts, changes and also it can be observed on different slopes. You have different kind of flora fauna present, right? So that is one interesting important point. Then human interaction is the second way. So what is that? Ecotones can also be formed as a result of human interaction. So what happens? For example, the transition between areas of forest and cleared land is the best example. There you can find a particular kind of flora and fauna existing. Now, characteristics of ecotones. What are its basic characteristics? Let's learn about that. So it may be wide or narrow. So it means there is no fixed aerial expanse. Okay, it can be wide at some places. It can also be narrow at some places. All right. It is zone of tension as the name itself suggests. It means it has conditions that is intermediate. Intermediate basically is between two. It is mediation. Okay. So to the adjacent ecosystems. Then what else? It could contain species that are entirely different from those found on the bordering systems. It means a core ecosystem A and a core ecosystem B. They will have their specific flora and fauna, okay, their specific population, their specific species. But what happens when they two meet? 
in the intermediate there is a different kind of species it is different entirely from what exists in a and b that is what it means then ecotones can be natural or man made that we already know about that so for example ecotone between agricultural field and forest is a man made one because agriculture is a culture it means we have made it it's not naturally available then ecotones are dynamic sometimes with strong fluctuations so remember ecotones are not static they are not fixed in particular way they are dynamic in nature and they fluctuate so suppose in littoral zone of a lake littoral zone is which is lit which has shallow water okay what happens an ecotone is the transition zone of distinct aquatic communities and varies throughout year because of seasonality so this littoral zone if you see fluctuates sometimes it is till the boundary sometimes it's going down because of higher rate of evaporation so it keeps changing and fluctuating along with that what changes is the species so that is what the basic characteristics of ecotones are all right now importance of ecotone why is it important why is it important for us to study ecotone let's understand that it is having a great variety of organisms it means it is highly contributing to biodiversity so if we understand biodiversity for conservation of biodiversity we must also look after our ecotone okay because it has variety of organisms then they are good nesting place for animals coming in search of nesting place or food so it means it's a place where people animals come to rest and nest so it's a favorable place for animals as well then they serve as bridge of gene flow now here is the important point remember the basic principles of ecology genetic flow right that is important principle of ecology so ecotone helps to maintain that how from one population to another because of larger genetic diversity here so remember biodiversity has three important things genetic diversity then what we have is species diversity and then finally the ecosystem diversity so three diversities combined together makes biodiversity and ecotone is an important place for this biodiversity then they can act as buffer zones offering protection to the bordering ecosystem so buffer zones will always be important right for example a wetland can absorb pollutants as well and prevent them from going to the river so remember wetland has its own importance it can reduce the pollutants to go to the river okay so buffer zone creation is one major important factor because of which ecotone is important all right now ecotones are very sensitive indicator of global climatic change so if we are concerned about global climatic change and its study we must understand the characteristics of ecotone if there is any kind of change in there we can observe it we can identify it we can analyze it and come to certain inferences regarding global climatic change that is another importance of ecotone and at last a shifting of boundaries between ecosystems is important and it is thought to be due to climate change so what happens scientists and environmentalists ecologists are studying ecotones with greater interest now so that's why it can be a potential question in upcoming examinations regarding the ecotones and examples from various places in the world regarding ecotone now another concept ecoline so we understood ecotone then what is ecoline ecoline is a zone of gradual but continuous change now understand ecotone is different ecoline is something different they are connected ecoline is a line as it says so it is a zonation it is a gradual but continuous change from one ecosystem to the other so what happens when there is no sharp boundary between the two in terms of species composition okay that is the zone of gradual change so that is called ecoline and ecoline occurs across environmental gradients now when i say environmental gradients it's important to understand what are the things that a environmental gradient involves so let's see that it is characterized by gradual change in abiotic factors that are part of environmental gradient what are those abiotic factors altitude 
temperature that is thermocline representation on map salinity that we say and depth these are four major parameters that is the part of environmental gradient so ecoline occurs along across this environmental gradients across altitudinal variation across temperatures across salinity and across different depths so i hope your concept of ecoline and ecotone is very clear if you have any questions please take out time and write me in the comment box now the third and the last part of this session that is edge effect that is edge species so two important points here the word itself is edge so what is at the edge and what is that effect so species are at the edge of the ecosystem where so edge effect refers to the change in population or community structures that occur at the boundary of two habitats okay it means edge effect happens in ecotone okay so that is where the boundary of two different population and community is there so edge effect happens there but what is it the number of species and population density of some species in the ecotone is much greater than either community so community a in a ecosystem community b in b ecosystem but remember when they meet there is a meeting point in ecotone there is a third species whose density of population dominates okay and that is what is called edge effect at the edge it is a favorable conditions of a and b both that's why a particular species of ecotone dominates the species at a and species at b that is why the number of species and the population density is much greater than the either community in their own ecosystems this effect is called edge effect it means the edge is more density than the core of the population that was in each ecosystem differently so at edge you have more density of population of that species rather than at the core itself okay now so the organisms which occur primarily or most abundantly in this zone are called edge species so those species which dominate the ecotone are called edge species whose density is more than the communities in different ecosystems adjoining ecosystems right in terrestrial ecosystems edge effect is specially applicable to birds remember edge effects are largely applicable and found to be there in the birds and it is visible okay for example the density of birds is greater in ecotone but it's not as much when we go to the forest or the agriculture land so remember when we go from agriculture land to forest in between that where you have shrub areas okay where you have grasses there you will find more density of birds that is the best way to understand the edge effect okay so at the edge it is greater what is greater the density of ecotone community right so thanks for watching the session and subscribing to my channel the geoecologist so stay safe and keep learning